I want to add LED lighting to an old miter saw, and I want to do it cheaply. So I looked at these lights that they have at the Harbor Freight. You can get a coupon for less than two bucks. These lights uh, put out a pretty good amount of light for uh, only having six volts worth of small batteries in them. Uh, you can take them apart with screws and disassemble them. Most of this you're going to throw away. Um, there's two strips of LED lighting in there. You can see them, they're yellow. And, uh, and there's a little switch and a resistor and then the battery pack. So we'll start by getting the battery pack uh, made that we can put onto the saw. We're going to reuse most of this. So what we'll do is we'll cut off each end of that uh, battery pack. And we're going to glue them together or actually tape them together. So, uh, you know, you can throw away that part that's in the middle, although the little magnets are good. And we're going to end up putting the batteries back in and having these things like a little uh, pod or a little pack. Now, the wires that are on there are pretty flimsy, so we're going to replace all of those with some more substantial wires here in a moment. But basically, this is going to be able to fit up on the saw handle as a small battery pack. Here it is with some... Uh, uh, better wires on it. And you can see that there's a resistor that limits the current, otherwise the LEDs would burn out. Now here's a push button switch that I want to have up on the miter saw handle and uh, I'm going to solder better wires onto this. Uh, this is going to go, the wires will be inside the handle so there's some disassembly that will be required. And uh, uh, this will give me a convenient way to turn the light off and on. Now you could use a micro switch to uh, turn this off and on because there are moving parts in the in the on and off switch. Um, but in this case, I'm going to control it with my thumb, and so I found a good place on the on the miter saw uh, where I can press the button with my thumb. You'll see that in just a moment. So the side of my handle comes off, and you can see that there's a bunch of switches and stuff in there already. And this is the place that I'm talking about that I think will be good for my thumb to work. But the button has to face the other way. And uh, this particular push button is a half inch. So I've drilled a pilot hole and I'm drilling a half inch hole in here. Now I tried to use the, uh, the small nut that fit on the back of this push button. Um, but it turns out that uh, it was impossible for me to get it in this small space. So what I ended up doing was to epoxy that switch uh, up into that spot. And these, uh, these are going to end up being run, the wires are going to end up being run inside the handle. So here you can see where I've epoxied it up in there. I just did it by gobbing it down in the bottom. Uh, it should be strong enough. So my thumb reaches the button nicely. It's out of my way whenever I'm cutting. Uh, now, here you can see I've routed the, the wires. I added some heat shrink wrap. I routed the wires up along the top of the handle, and I have them come out up near the front. That's where the battery pack is going to end up being. So the battery pack and the uh, other LED lights are going to have to be wired together up there at the front of the handle. So here's the little strips that uh, have the LED lights on them. And uh, I've soldered some better wire onto these, a little more substantial gauge and uh, keep shrinking the, those contacts so they don't get shorted out. I did put epoxy on the other end of the LEDs. Now here you can see where I'm going to put the uh, put the LED on the one side of the blade. The, the bottom side of the motor mount has uh, a place. We can put some epoxy on that metal, drip some onto the saw, and uh, then to hold it in place I used a, a piece of metal that uh, was heavy and would uh, hold that in place. Well, this turned out not to be my, not to be my greatest idea. Uh, on the other side, I figured out that I could use some clear packing tape and uh, have a much better way of positioning this thing. So this right here did work, uh, but my, my positioning turned out to be a little bit crooked. Uh, you can see here, the light is located, so it's gonna cast a shadow down the side of the blade. On the opposite side, I didn't have as much metal to work with. I just had a thin piece of casting. Uh, but it's enough to put some epoxy onto it and to use some packing tape to hold it into place. That one I did get straight. So it's going to cast a shadow down the left side of the blade. 
So here you can see both of them in place after the tape's been removed. Uh, note the shrouding that I made for dust collection on this particular saw. That's a different topic. But in any case, you'll get a shadow down off each side of the blade. It would have been nice if these had been uh, positioned a little bit better. So here's my battery pack ready to go. The, the resistor is in there. That provides a positive voltage. The negative side is the black. And this is going to go up in here. I'm just positioning it temporarily. i got to connect all these wires to each other. And I end up using some wire nuts and uh, crimping in one case. But in any case, all of this is going to get tie wrapped to that uh, cord so that it'll be held into place nicely. So when I press the button, the power is going to flow through the switch out to the red wires. The red wires go down to the LEDs. The negative side comes back up and all the blacks are joined together. And here's where the switch is connected in to the, the red coming off of the battery pack. So when I press the button, now I get a light down there at the bottom. And that light allows you to place a piece of wood in there. Let's say you've got a mark on your wood. When you press the uh, light, it casts a shadow. And actually what's um, nicest is where the two lights come together. When you lower the blade right there, you can see that it gets to be the width of the blade. And that shows where the blade's going to cut the wood at. Now if you get really close to it, you can see a shadow forms uh, down at the closest tooth to the wood. And you can control that off and on with the thumb switch. So this gives me a ability to uh, have a light. The way I did it, uh, it's going to be vulnerable for damage. Um, if, if I had experimented with some clear tape, I might have been able to find a better placement for my LEDs. And uh, I think that I probably am going to get a, a benefit of just having better task lighting in there, even if I don't use the shadow. You can see a list of materials here and a list of tools that I used, but it was a pretty cheap project. And uh, now I've got some LED lighting on my miter saw. All right, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.